so here we are working on a router template. Uh, we need to install a uh, Sleechy Air hinge, and it looks something like this. And so I want to show you where I started from. I uh, made a jig. I oversized my middle material based on my router and my uh, bit, which I'm using a quarter inch bit, and I believe it's a half inch collet. And so then I added 3.65 millimeters to that so I could get to a 10 millimeter cutting width. And then from there, I did my first test pass. And oh, I should have got this out before I started the video. So let's see if I can push back to the bottom. Okay. And when I did my first test pass, when I did my first test pass, you can see that there was a little bit of slop in the hinge. So I took some uh, note card, 3 by 5 index card stock, and I laminated it on the inside of the jig there. You can't really tell, but I did three layers here to account for the end, uh, and then I did two layers here and I am now a little bit over snug so it took just a, I don't know, a thousandth off with a chisel or maybe two thousandths but I'm either going to leave it this tight or I'm going to shave my paper down just slightly I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to do but that's where I'm at now I'm going to replicate the jig uh, so it's one piece oh I, I forgot to show the other thing I did, uh, which was a stop. So I needed a 10 millimeter offset. So from the end of the barrel of the hinge to the end of the face plate, mounting plate is, if you get a rule, oh, well, it's 10 millimeters. I don't know why I'm trying to show that on camera, but it's a 10 millimeter offset. So what I did is I marked where the router stopped before. And then I moved it over 10 millimeters. And I used two sets of five millimeter dowel pins. And I put these pins in here so that uh, it was an index stop for my router. So that was allowing me to do the uh, flat spot here, the 10 millimeter flat spot. So let's see how version two turns out. Well, here we are. The uh, final uh, result is right in front of me. I'll show you guys uh, what we, I did to get this result and where I started and the mistakes that came along the way. So here is the uh, final result, kind of a little teaser, but it fits in uh, pretty nice. And I want to show you where we came from. So I first cut uh, using, like I said in the last video, using my bearing guide and the size of bit. I cut the uh, shims for the width here. And what I discovered that it was too wide, so I used the note cards to uh, reduce the thick or the opening dimension. And what I didn't show earlier, I thought it was kind of clever. I put uh, wedges in here to clamp the, uh, I did it for both sides, but use that to clamp the uh, block in to hold the paper in while the super glue dried to make sure that wasn't any bumps. And then what I did, I did the multiple tests here, and you can see that uh, I tried the different ones. The first one was a little bit too tight. Uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the first one was a little bit too loose. The second one was just a little bit too tight. And the third one, I um, ended up filing the jig. I put a little rasp on it and filed the jig. Anyway, I used a, where is it? Oh, here it is. I had a 3 8 flesh trim bit. And so what I did is I replicated this on top of another jig, just drilled a hole and flesh trimmed it out, which was great. And then I added, uh, I freehanded the uh, 
routing here for doing the T bolts. And then I started to use a 10 millimeter cutter here for the slot. It was way too big. So I ended up using an eight and it's a little bit better. And let me show you what uh, I did with the jig here. So let's see if I can't drop this off the table. I found some wing nuts in the back. I cut a piece of three quarter by inch and eight stock because that's the size of T bolts I had. And I put that on the bottom here. And that's going to allow me to adjust how far the hinge is placed from the edge of the material. And this was my sample here. So you can see that's how it lines up there. So that's really cool. Uh, yeah, it's proud of my jig. And uh, I marked the 10 millimeter offset reminder that when this comes off, it gives me that flat spot here. Uh, so now for the final show. Let's see how nice that really fits. I think if I remember right, yeah. This goes in there pretty nice. So uh, the radius is off a little bit in this corner, but I don't think that's going to be the first noticed spot. But uh, very pleased with it. To get the final depth, because I only have a one inch router bit, I ended up using a Forstner bit to get the final depth. But uh, we're excited to apply this to the doors and uh, should be kind of fun. So thanks for following along. And uh, it was kind of fun to, uh, oh, I should show one more failure. So I think the router plunged too deep and the collet uh, hit the guide bushing retainer and it just started, it spun loose, which was unfortunate. And I don't know if you can see in here, but it got all gouged up. So uh, fortunately I haven't I had another one in a set. I don't know if I'm gonna try to fix this one or, uh, but I need to make sure the depth of the plunge doesn't hit that, uh, uh, top of the uh, guide bushing container locking ring. Anyway, uh, really pleased with the results overall. It looks really good. So, thanks for following along.